Hi everybody, welcome to my homestead and welcome to my channel. My name is Jared. In this video, I got a comment from Lily Lanius that says, Jared, look at the September Liahona 1977 Zion article. I think that's a typo. Zion article from, Br from Bruce R. McConkie. And Lily, I'm really glad that you pointed this out because I think I've covered this a long time ago, maybe at the beginning of the channel. And there was a quote that I'd been searching for for all this time. And it's in this article. So thank you very much. And this article is a very good, clear, concise uh, explanation and clarification of what it means to build Zion. I've noticed during the course of this channel, there's a lot of struggle in trying to interpret the scriptures and understand what that means. There's a certain class that believes that it means everybody, the entire church, going to Jackson County, Missouri in the lead up to the second coming. And that's what it means. And it has to do with physical safety from civil war or World War III um, and, you know, plagues and stuff like that. Just a lot of not understanding what it means. And as always, I prefer to read the scriptures and then see what prophets and apostles say about those scriptures, because they're the ones that are running the show under the direction of Christ. So they know what these scriptures mean. We should always look to prophets and apostles for interpretation. And this article really clarifies very clearly what it means to build up Zion and to gather to Zion. So before we get into that, I've updated the Flood the Earth Challenge. We're at 7,326 copies of the Book of Mormon that have been shared. And uh, we have one new person that joined. Uh, hopefully, if, if you haven't already, you'll consider uh, participating in this challenge. You just share a Book of Mormon, whether it's a digital copy, uh, using the Gospel Library app, and sharing the Book of Mormon app, or a hard copy. And then let me know in the comments of any video, or send me an email. Keep your comment or email very short. Please include hashtag flood so that I can find it. And then I'll update you here on the tracker. So good job, everybody. Okay, so uh, this is the art. This is the Leah Honer right here. And and by the way, just a little tangent. I noticed on the cover of all these, it says Tambuli. Uh, am I reading that right, Tambuli? It doesn't say Leah Hona. Is this like a a prior name of the Leah Hona? Like, does anybody under like? understand this or know why that is. Um, anyway, I just thought I'd point that out. But uh, what's interesting is I originally, even though she said Leahona in the comment, I went to the end sign, the September 1977 end sign, and this article was not in there. So a lot of times there was like overlap between the two magazines. So I had to come specifically to the September 1977 Leahona, and that's where this is found. Okay, so the name of this article is Building Zion by Elder Bruce R. McConkie. We are grateful beyond any measure of expression for the very excellent work being done in the church here in South America. We extend our high commendation to the noble men who serve as regional representatives of the Twelve, as stake presidents, as bishops, and in other responsible positions in the stakes and wards. We feel that a foundation has been laid for great progress and development. We foresee a day when the church will be a very substantial influence in all these great nations. It is a matter of great gratification that stakes of Zion have been organized here. We hope to see this, the stakes increase in number and in effectiveness. I shall speak of the gathering of Israel and of the building up of Zion in the last days. As we all know, the Lord scattered Israel among all the nations of the earth because they forsook him and broke his commandments. As we all know, or sorry, as we also know, he is now gathering in the lost sheep of Israel and laying upon them the obligation to build up his latter day Zion. The gathering of Israel and this budding of Zion in the last days occurs in stages. Okay, this is a very important concept. This is very important. Stages. The early part of the work, which involved gathering to the United States, and building stakes of Zion in North America has already been accomplished. Okay? So it's already been accomplished. And I think this is something that people don't understand. They'll read Doctrine and Covenants, 
and they think that this has reference to the future. There's a certain way of interpreting the scriptures that people pursue where they think that everything in the scriptures has to do with the future, and it's for them. It's for them to participate in, for them to witness. And by taking that way of interpretation, you misunderstand what certain prophecies are. This is something that's already occurred. At the time of Joseph Smith, Brigham Young, and then the next couple of prophets, yeah, you had to go to North America. You had to go to the United States. You had to go to, um, you had to go to Kirtland. You had to go to, you know, far west, Jackson County, Nauvoo, and then ultimately Salt Lake. But look what he says here. This has already been accomplished. All right, continuing. We are now engaged in gathering Israel within the various nations of the earth and of establishing stakes of Zion at the remote parts of the earth. This is the work that is now going forward in all the nations of South America and of which I shall now speak. By the mouth of an ancient prophet and from the lips of one who lived 3,000 years ago, the Lord sent a message to us. The holy man of old who spake as he was moved upon by the Holy Ghost said these words. This shall be written for the generation to come. It is sent to the people which shall be created, to a people who shall praise the Lord. From Psalms 102, 18. We are that people, a people who once again received revelation, a people who, whom God has given anew the fullness of his everlasting gospel, in consequence of which we praise his holy name forever. The message which has come to us is that the Lord will... Have mercy upon Zion, for the time to favor her, yea, the set time is come. The message is that when the Lord shall build up Zion, he shall appear in his glory. Psalms 102, 13 to 16. Now, if I may be properly guided by the power of the Spirit, I wish uh, which I devoutly desire, a wish which I devoutly desire, I shall speak of the manner in which the Lord will build up Zion the manner in which the Lord is having mercy upon Zion, and the part we are expected to play in the building of Zion. As is clear from the inspired account, Zion shall be built up. Okay, again, here's a phrase that some people take to mean the literal city of New Jerusalem in Independence, Jackson County, Missouri. Continuing with the article. She shall obtain that perfection and glory, which is hers, when the Lord appears in his glory. She shall then become as she once was. This will be during the millennium when the restoration of all things is completed. Zion shall be perfected after the second coming of Christ. This is important to note. Okay, this is important to note. But in the meantime, and as of now, the Lord has laid upon us the responsibility to lay the foundation for what you, for that which is to be. We have been commissioned to prepare a people for the second coming of the Son of Man. Now, this reminds me of what President Nelson said in the October 2022 General Conference in his talk called Overcome the World and Find Rest. President Nelson says, as I, as I have stated before, the gathering of Israel is the most important work taking place on the earth today. One crucial element of this gathering is preparing a people who are able, ready, and worthy to receive the Lord when he comes again. A people who have already chosen Jesus Christ over this fallen world. A people who rejoice in their agency to live the higher, holier laws of Jesus Christ. I call upon you, my dear brothers and sisters, to become this righteous people. Okay, let's continue. We have been called to preach the gospel to every nation and kindred and tongue and people. We have been commanded to lay the foundations of Zion and to get all things ready for the return of him who shall again crown the holy city with his presence and glory. Our call to all men everywhere is come to Zion, come to Zion, and within her walls rejoice. Now, what is Zion and where shall she be established? On what ground shall we build her walls? Where shall we place her gates and strong towers? Who shall dwell within her portals? And what blessings shall rest upon her inhabitants? Truly the scripture saith, 
The Lord loveth the gates of Zion more than all the dwellings of Jacob. Glorious things are spoken of thee, O city of God, and of Zion. It shall be, and of Zion it shall be said, This in that man was born in her, and the highest himself shall establish her. From Psalms 87, 2 through 3, in verse 5. Zion has been established many times among men. From the day of Adam to the present moment, whenever the Lord has had a people of his own, whenever they have been where wherever whenever there have been those who have hearkened to his voice and kept his commandments, whenever his saints have served him, there has been Zion. Our first scriptural account relative to Zion concerns Enoch in his city. That prophet of transcendent faith and power lived with lived while Father Adam yet dwelt in mortality. It was a day of wickedness and evil, a day of darkness and rebellion, a day of war and desolation, a day leading up to the cleansing of the earth by water. Enoch, however, was faithful. He saw the Lord and talked with him face to face as one man speaks with another. The Lord sent him to cry repentance to the world and commissioned him to baptize in the name of the Father and of the Son, which is full of grace and truth, and of the Holy Ghost, which beareth record of the Father and the Son. Enoch made covenants and assembled a congregation of true believers, all of whom became so faithful that the Lord came and dwelt with his people, and they dwelt in righteousness, and were blessed from on high. And the Lord called his people Zion, because they were of one heart and one mind, and dwelt in righteousness, and there was no poor among them. Please note, okay, now this is important. Please note, Zion is people. Zion is the saints of God. Zion is those who have been baptized. Zion is those who receive the Holy Ghost. Zion is those who keep the commandments. Zion is the righteous, or in other words, as our, as, as our revelation recites, this is Zion, the pure in heart. Okay, city of Enoch. After the Lord called his people, Zion, the scripture says that Enoch built a city that was called the city of holiness, even Zion that Zion was taken up into heaven, where God received it into his own bosom, and that from thence went forth the saying, Zion is fled. After the Lord's people were translated, now pay attention to this, because, again, like I've said in other videos, there are instances where in the scriptures there will be like a mysterious verse or a phrase or uh, questions unanswered, and people like to fill it in with something exciting, something spectacular, something mysterious, you know, the secret interpretation, the secret knowledge, right? This is one of those things when it comes to the city of Enoch. There's people that think that essentially a massive piece of the earth was taken up. And I, I know where it comes from. I know where it comes from. But let's look and see what Bruce R. McConkie says. Is it land and buildings and streets and stuff like that that was taken up when we're talking about the city of Enoch? Because there's all sorts of theories about how, you know, when we see, for example, an asteroid or comet or something like that, that it's the original land that was separated from the earth and now it's coming back. I know one of the more popular ones is that the Gulf of Mexico that's where the city of Enoch was. And so the reason why we have the Gulf of Mexico is because that land was taken and, you know, uh, translated. It was caught up. It was removed from the earth. Okay, look, look what he says right here. After the Lord's people were translated, for it was people who were caught up into heaven, not brick and mortar and stone, for there are better homes already in heaven than men can build on earth. After these righteous saints were to dwell beyond the veil, others, being converted and desiring righteousness, looked for a city which, which hath foundation, whose builder and maker is God, and they too were caught up by the powers of heaven into Zion. So I'm going with this. This is something that's been said by an apostle. It's been published in the Liahona. It wasn't brick and mortar and stone, uh, land because he says here that they went beyond the veil, that there were better places for them beyond the veil in heaven. 
All right, continuing. And, th- and this is, th- by the way, this is the quote that I was looking for because I knew that I had read this before. I don't know if it's somewhere else, but, well, we know that it's here in this article. So I'm going to add this to my spreadsheet. This same Zion, which was taken up into heaven, shall return during the millennium. And really quick, just based on what he just said, it's not a massive piece of land. It's not a literal city with buildings and roads and stuff like that. It's the people. The people are going to be returning. Continuing, when the Lord brings Zion again and its inhabitants shall shall join with the new Jerusalem, which shall then be established. Gathering of Israel. That many of these truths about Zion were known and taught in ancient Israel is clear from the many references in Isaiah, in the Psalms, and elsewhere. Isaiah made particular mention of stakes of Zion, which would be established in the day of restoration. As is well known, ancient Israel was scattered among all the nations of the earth because they forsook the Lord and worshipped false gods. As is also well known, the gathering of Israel consists of receiving the truth, gaining again a true knowledge of the Redeemer, and coming back into the true fold of the Good Shepherd. In the language of the Book of Mormon, it consists of being restored to the true church and fold of God, and then being gathered and established in various lands of promise. See 2 Nephi uh, 9.2. Let's just read that really quick. That he has spoken unto the Jews... By the mouth of his holy prophets, even from the beginning down from generation to generation, until the time comes that they shall be restored to the true church and fold of God, when they shall be gathered home to the lands of their inheritance, and be and shall be established in all their lands of promise. Yeah, all their lands of promise. Okay. Two things are accompli- two things are accomplished by the gathering of Israel. First, those who have thus chosen Christ as their shepherd. Those who have taken upon themselves his name in the waters of baptism, those who are seeking to enjoy his spirit here and now, and to be inheritors of eternal life hereafter, such people need to be gathered together to strengthen each other and to help one another perfect their lives. So that's one purpose of gathering. There's people that paint the picture that the purpose of gathering to Jackson County, Missouri is to be protected by supernatural forces or by the 10 lost tribes who come with their technology that fight off the uh, surrounding forces that are in a current state of civil war or anarchy or whatever the case may be, you know, looking for some kind of like physical redemption, physical protection. But no, the purpose for gathering, let's read it again. Such people need to be gathered together to strengthen each other and to help one another perfect their lives. And second, those who are seeking the highest rewards in eternity need to be where they can receive the blessings of the house of the Lord, both for themselves and for their ancestors in Israel who died without a knowledge of the gospel, but who would have received it with all their heart uh, had opportunity afforded. Manifestly, In the early days of this dispensation, this meant gathering to the mountain of the Lord's house in the tops of the mountains of North America. There alone were congregations strong enough for the saints to strengthen each other. There alone were the temples of the Most High where the fullness of the ordinances of exaltation are performed. And this has been repeated a number of times. Uh, let me just show you a couple examples. It's not just Bruce R. McConkie. Uh, I've covered this YouTube video before. This is on Church News. It's called Come to Zion, uh, Elder David A. Bednar. I'll put the link for it in the description below so you can watch it. It's short. It's only 2 minutes and 33 seconds. I, uh, I took it down and transcribed it, and I have it on my quotes, common misconceptions spreadsheet under the entire church still has to be gathered to New Jerusalem, Jackson County, Missouri. And this is what Elder Bednar says. And by the way, this was recent. This was seven months ago. He says, if you take a look at the construction of temples, you begin to see in the 1970s increased construction of temples all around the world. What we're seeing now is an acceleration of what began in the 1970s in bringing temples closer to the people. 
That is a magnificent thing to behold in this remarkable season of the history of the church. I think this is one of the great indications that the Restoration is ongoing. In the early history of the church, the call to the Latter-day Saints all over the world was to come to Zion, come to Kirtland, come to Nauvoo, come to Salt Lake. And Joseph taught that the purpose of the gathering was so that the saints would be in a position in a place where temples could be built. They needed the resources. They needed the skills to be able to do that. But that began to change in the administration of President Kimball when he and other church leaders said, no, stay where you are. Don't come to Salt Lake City. This is not the only place where you find Zion. So the saints in Argentina, for the saints in Argentina, Zion is in Argentina. The great blessing is that a world that grows increasingly dark and increasingly wicked, access to the power of godliness through the covenants and ordinances of the gospel of Jesus Christ, is one of the greatest spiritual resources and blessings that members have. So it's about temples. It's not about coming to Jackson County for supernatural protection. This is the same type of way that the Jews thought before Christ came. They are expecting physical protection, physical redemption, spectacular, supernatural, uh, domination of the world through the Messiah. It's it's like the same type of um, thinking, and we should not fall into that trap. There are really important spiritual lessons here when we're talking about these scriptures and about this prophecy of gathering to Zion. It's a real practical thing. It's a spiritual thing. It's being able to uh, enter into and progress down the covenant path, which you can't do if you're somewhere where there's not a temple. You can get baptized. You can get the, you can receive the Holy Ghost. But then beyond that, if you don't have a temple near you, then either you're not going to be able to go or you'll have to go somewhere where there is a temple. Um, There's another one here. This is from Jeff, uh, well, now uh, President Holland, at the time Elder Holland. Uh, This is an Ensign article from June 2014. It's called The Call to be Christlike. And he says, in these last days in our dispensation, we've become mature enough to stop running. We have become mature enough to plant our feet and our families and our foundation in every nation kindred, tongue, and people permanently. And he puts permanently in italics. Because again, there's this notion that, well, you're there now. Yes, you're supposed to gather throughout the world, but you're going to eventually go to Jackson County, Missouri. No, no, you're not. Some people might, but not the entire church. He says permanently. And then he further says, Zion is everywhere, wherever the church is. And with that change, we no longer think of Zion as where we are going to live. We think of it as how we are going to live. And then lastly, uh, we have a recent article in uh, the Ensign in Leahona, April 2020. It's from President Nelson. It's called The Future of the Church Preparing the World for the Savior's Second Coming. President Nelson says, The choice to come unto Christ is not a matter of physical location. It is a matter of individual commitment. All members of the church have access to the doctrine, ordinances, priesthood keys, and blessings of the gospel, regardless of their location. People can be brought to the knowledge of the Lord without leaving their homelands. True, in the early days of the church— Conversion often meant immigration as well. But now the gathering takes place in each nation. The Lord has declared the establishment of Zion in each realm where he has given his saints their birth and nationality. The place of gathering for Brazilian saints is in Brazil. The place of gathering for Nigerian saints is in Nigeria. The place of gathering for Korean saints is in Korea. Zion is the pure in heart. It is wherever righteous saints are. So you guys, 
and this isn't all this isn't all of it i have more on my common misconceptions spreadsheet and there's probably more that i haven't even found yet it's repeated over and over and over and over and over again there's not going to be this mass gathering to jackson county missouri that's not how it's going to happen it's repeated over and over and over again all right continuing <clears throat> let's see we already heard that okay the church in all the world however in the providences of him who knoweth all things and the providences of him who scattered israel and who is now gathering that favored people again the day has now come when the fold of christ is reaching out to the ends of the earth we are not established in all nations but we surely shall be before the second coming of the son of man as the book of mormon says in the last days the saints of god shall be found upon all the face of the earth also the saints of the church of the lamb and the covenant people of the lord scatters scattered as they are upon the face of the earth shall be armed with righteousness and with the power of god in great glory we are living in a new day. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is fast becoming a worldwide church. Congregations of saints are now, or soon will be, strong enough to support and sustain their members, no matter where they reside. Temples are being built wherever the need justifies. We can foresee many temples in South America in process of time. Now, that's interesting. This is back in 1977, and let's look at the map right now. I have pulled up all my, uh, all the temple locations that I have saved on Google Earth. And let's take a look at South America. And uh, there are a ton of temples in South America. Uh, I believe in every nation, except for maybe these ones up here, like uh, Suriname and stuff. Suriname, Guyana, and French Guiana. I'm sure, I'm sure they will be at some point, but... Anyway, for right now, uh, aside from those, we have we do have uh, temples in every nation in South America. So that is really neat, and it's pretty dramatic compared to what things looked like in the 1970s. Let me know if you're from South America, and uh, let me know, like, if you live there or if you did live there, what your temple is or was at the time that you lived there. And how you experienced temples in South America. And then if you go beyond South America, another big one is Africa. In my own lifetime, there has been a dramatic increase in temples in Africa. At the time that I went on my mission in 2004, there were only three temples. One in South Africa, one in Nigeria, and one in Ghana. But now uh, you have them all over the place. Um, I know that we have them. They're either constructed or announced i know that there's been a couple in the congo the democratic republic of the congo as well as the republic of the congo which is a different country kenya um we have the ivory coast right yeah ivory coast right there and the new ones in both nigeria and ghana liberia sierra leone okay so oh yeah madagascar over here Mozambique, Zimbabwe. So it's pretty incredible. This is just like within the last 20 years that we have all these new temples. All right, so let's go back here. Stakes of Zion. Stakes of Zion are also being organized at the ends of the earth. In this connection, let us ponder these truths. A stake of Zion is a part of Zion. You cannot create a stake of Zion without creating a part of Zion. Zion is the pure in heart. We gain purity of heart by baptism and by ob obedience. Now look at this. <clears throat> this is another quote I'm going to add to my spreadsheet. A stake, a stake has geographical boundaries. To create a stake is like founding a city of holiness. Do you understand what that means, a city of holiness? Let's go to Moses chapter 7, verse 19. And Enoch continued pre his preaching in righteousness unto the people of God. And it came to pass in his days that he built a city 
that was called the City of Holiness, even Zion. So that's pretty incredible. To create a stake is like founding a city of holiness. Now, when we're talking about Independence, Missouri, or Jackson County, or the center place, however you want to refer to it as, uh, the original plan, and I've covered this before on the channel, uh, I used to have a playlist called New Jerusalem, but now I'm revamping all my playlists, so at some point I'll recreate it and I'll go point by point by point. Um, but I've already covered this, but in case this is new to you, if you go to the Joseph Smith papers, it has what New Jerusalem, this, okay, again, New Jerusalem refers to the entire church. I've covered that before. Joseph Fielding Smith said, no, I better look for people that don't believe me. Um, let's go over here. Go down. This Now I'm on my quotes A through Z spreadsheet. Go down to New Jerusalem definition. Okay, Joseph Fielding Smith, Doctrines of Salvation, Volume 3, page 492. The vision of John and the revelation to Joseph Smith both have reference to the same event. The second coming of our Lord in his power and glory to receive his church or kingdom the new Jerusalem being the capital city of the church. And there is no difference in the meaning, whether references to the church or the new Jerusalem. Okay. It's the same thing. New Jerusalem in the church is the same thing. So, but there is going to be, there is going to be a center place. There is going to be a literal city, but guess what? It's not very big. So here's the original plan. This is the uh, early June to the 25th of June, 1833 uh, plat of the city of Zion. And the original plan is this. Let me zoom in. The whole square or plot is supposed to contain from 15 to 20,000 people. And that's it. You see this right here? These are all the like parcels of land. Okay. This is how the city was going to be divided up. It was going to be a grid. And then in the middle, you'd have the 24 temples, the 24 temple complex. The ones on the east side are the temples of the Aaronic priesthood. The ones on the west side, the temples of the Melchizedek priesthood. And um, essentially what it would be is that this city would be a stake and all other cities would be patterned after this. So a city would be a stake, and a stake would be a city. And we just read from Bruce R. McConkie that a stake is a city of holiness. So it makes sense. Uh, there is a revised plat that came out in August 1833. It was expanded a bit, and the orientation of the temples were changed. Uh, to where they all face, uh, like, east. I'm not sure if that's how it was on this one. It doesn't really show the direction, but... Well, it may, they may have faced east before. I'm not sure. But you can see that it used to be, like, on the south side, you'd have three. Like, if you're looking at one block, on the south there would be three. And then going up, you would have four temples. So, like, three on the bottom, four on the sides. Well, that was changed up to where it'd be four on the bottom and then three on the sides, and they would face east. And, um, and, uh, there's actually names to these temples. Oops, not on this one. There's names. And I created a spreadsheet. I don't have the, the spreadsheet pulled up, but, um, if you go to this second page over here, just in case you're interested, it says, uh, what all, th all these temples are supposed to be named. And they're, they're like named or described in groups of three. And they're all right here. Okay. Uh, I'll just do it anyway. You can go to my spreadsheet, go down to, let's see, go, here we go. Go to New Jerusalem 24 Temple Complex. Let me zoom out. And here I put all the descriptions slash names uh, for these temples. Okay. So they're all right here. Um, and then remember, 
Joseph Smith received the dimensions in the plans for these temples, and this is what it was supposed to look like. So here's like a like a interior view or a schematic or not a schematic, but like a the plan for the temple. You can see the pulpits right here. You know, this is like the assembly room that's on the top floor. Here's the pulpits on this side. And um, one thing that we've already covered on the channel, but I'll do it again really quick, is that we have the Independence Visitor Center. And I just recently went to that in uh, September. The Independence Visitor Center. Everybody always focuses focuses on the fact that we don't own the temple lot, which is owned by the Church of Christ temple lot, not the Community of Christ. It's a smaller church. There's only like 1,700 members or something like that. And uh, But we do have this piece of land right here, and we built the Independence Visitor Center. And guess what this is? This is a future temple. And how do I know that? Because it's in the diary of Alvin R. Dyer, who was a very special apostle. He ended up being part of the first presidency, and he had a specific task that had to do with the lands in Missouri. And right here on the Interpreter Foundation article talking about the, the past and future of the temple lot, um, it, it shows you an excerpt of what he said in his diary. And, well, let me, I'll just read it. Okay. So, okay. Interestingly, in the, in the development of those plans in early 1967 by church architect Emil Fetzer, and with input directly from Alvin R. Dyer and approval by President David O. McKay, the awareness of the Joseph Smith-inspired expanded 24 Temple Complex prepared in early 1833 was definitely taken into consideration. On March 10, 1967, a meeting of Dyer and Fetzer was held with McKay in his Hotel Utah apartment office. Dyer recorded the highlights of this session in his diary. Quote, we reported to pres to the president that our okay we reported to the president that our study in this direction was to undertake if we could to ascertain which of the temple buildings designated would presumably be located on that part of the temple land that the church owned this we had arrived at and would be con would be concentrated upon for the erection of a building for the purpose intended the basic, structure, the basic structure of which could be used at a future date as part of the temple complex. The proposed structure would be two stories high with a floor dimension of 61 feet by 87 feet. Okay, look at this right here. This building right here, that they, <clears throat> before they built it, they determined which temple this would be. They decided to go ahead and, and, uh, well, as it says here, which dimension is the same as revealed to the prophet Joseph Smith as the size of the complex buildings, meaning the temples. So this was built to be converted into a temple at some future time. And you have the dimensions here, 61 feet by 87 feet. And you can see that here on this plan. Here it is right here. The house, this house of the Lord for the presidency is 87 feet long and 61 feet wide. Okay? And uh, this is what it's supposed to look like. Let me go up here to where the arrow is. It's basically supposed to look like the Kirtland Temple. That's what these temples are supposed to look like. So, when we look at Independence, Missouri, as it is right now, we have a temple. It's not a temple yet but it was uh, designed to, to, to be part of the temple complex, to be one of the temples. We have a temple right there, and we also have a stake. And we just talked about the fact that a stake is a city of holiness. We already have New Jerusalem there. It just needs to be refined a little bit. And over the course of time, you know, when the community of Christ ends up disintegrating or falling or however it all plays out, you know, once, uh, once they're gone, once uh, the, the Church of Christ Temple lot, once they, whatever happens to them happens, we'll be able to complete the complex. And, 
you know, fill out the rest of the city how it was supposed to be built. But the important parts are already there. The City of Holiness in the Independence Stake and the Independence Visitor Center, which is just waiting to be converted into a temple. And that's it. All right, so let's continue. A stake has geographical boundaries. To create a stake is like founding a city of holiness. Every stake on earth is the gathering place for the lost sheep of Israel who live in its area. The gathering takes place for Peruvians. Sorry, the gathering the gathering place for Peruvians is in the stakes of Zion in Peru or in the places in which soon will become stakes. The gathering place for Chileans is Chile. For Bolivians, it is in Bolivia. For Koreans, it is in Korea. And so it goes through all the length and breadth of the earth. Scattered Israel is every nation, and every nation is called to gather to the fold of Christ, to the stakes of Zion, as such are established in their nations. Isaiah prophesied that the Lord shall cause them to come of Jacob to take root. Israel shall blossom and bud and fill the face of the earth with fruit. The Lord's promise is, ye shall, ye shall be gathered one by one, O ye children of Israel. Isaiah 27, 6 and 12. That is to say, Israel shall be gathered one by one, family by family, unto the stakes of Zion established in all parts of the earth, so that the whole earth shall be blessed with the fruits of the gospel. This then is the counsel of the brethren. Build up Zion, but build it up in the area where God has given you your birth and nationality. Build it up where he has given you citizenship, family, and friends. Zion is here in South America, and the saints who compromise this part of Zion are and should be a spreading influence for good in all these nations. And know this, God will bless that nation which so orders its affairs as to further the work. Zion in the last days. His work includes the building up of Zion in the last days. He has commissioned us to do that work for him. The foundations of Zion have already been laid in North America, in South America, in Europe, in Asia, in the South Pacific, and in every place where there are stakes of Zion. But Zion is not yet perfected in any of these places. When she is perfected, it will be as with the Zion of old, the Lord will come and dwell with his people. All right, so we're going to go ahead and end it there. So I think there's a lot, like it's just so clearly worded and explained what it means to gather to Zion, to New Jerusalem, um, what a stake is, uh, what happened to the city of Enoch, and was it land? No. Was it people? Yes, that were translated. And just so many good gems that came out of this article. So once again, thank you, Lily, for reminding me of this. I'm going to copy some of these some some of these down and put them on my spreadsheets. Remember, you can access my spreadsheets anytime. If you want to come here and look at the 24 Temple Complex and the names, you can come to my spreadsheet. The link for it is in the description below. Uh, it's in the description of every single video. This particular spreadsheet is called New Jerusalem 24 Temple Complex. But I'll also, I'll also put the links for uh, the Joseph Smith papers so you can see the originals. And uh, it's all right here, too. Um, all the details really are on this first um, version where it has like the names of the temples and stuff like that. You can see there's a lot of stuff here on the right side and, and then you can go over here and go to the back side and it's on the back side that you find the names of the temples. Okay, but that's going to be it for this one. So if you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe, like this video if you liked it. Leave your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. Also make sure to share it and I'll talk to you guys later.